everybody, Captain Starlight here and welcome to Starlight TV. To everyone watching in the Starlight Express rooms across Australia and people watching on YouTube and whatever medium you're watching through, welcome. I am here, it is Captain Starlight and we have a really exciting, really, really cool guest with us today. Everyone who's watching, we have our local comic book artist, Saurabh, and he is here to draw us some really cool things with us. Saurabh, can you hear us? I can. Thanks for having me, Uno. Oh, thank you for being here. Now, Saurabh, tell us, what do you have in front of you there? So in front of me, I have the beginnings of a drawing of a superhero that all the kids around Australia, I guess, I don't know how many people have voted on this, but it's been quite a few, have voted on, you know, whether it's tall or short, a boy or a girl or a grandma, there were all these different things that they could vote on. And so we ended up with a bald boy with Jack Jack style hair, which you can see here, a little half face mask, no capes, of course, no capes. And yep. yeah, and so I'm just starting to draw him now. And you guys are gonna get to watch me um, finish this off. And hopefully by the end of it, we'll have something that looks pretty cool. That sounds amazing. Now, I wonder if we can get the the poll up of, this, of the, uh, the features and the superpowers. So here we go. This is, so we have gotten that it's gonna be a boy. Yeah. And, ooh, surprise me was an option. Very surprise cool. Was an option. <laughs> so right now you are drawing the facial features of this character. Yes. Um, and what is this person's main superpower? Well, they got to vote on that as well. And so I know that he can fly oh, and awesome. he has some pretty cool gadgets like Batman does. So I don't know what else we're going to be adding to it. If anyone has any other ideas and they can, you know, vote in while we're while we're on here, feel free and um, we can try and put those in somehow. That sounds incredible. So he's basically a flying Batman. Pretty much, yeah. Right yeah. now, as it stands. As it stands, he is a flying Batman. He doesn't have a utility belt. He's got kind of a utility leg band because why not? Something a little bit different. <laughs> that is really cool. So now, sorry, just tell us a bit about yourself. What is, firstly, who is your favorite superhero and why is that your favorite superhero? Wow, that's a, that's a, well, that's actually an easy question. I love a lot of superheroes, but my favorite superhero is Superman. Um, he's, he's always been my favorite growing up. He was always my favorite. Um, I loved watching the animated Superman show. I loved watching Smallville, which was a live action Superman show. I just, I've always loved that character. And, you know, who doesn't want to be able to, to fly and have super strength and shoot lasers out of their eyes? It's pretty cool. Um, so I love him. And he's, he's a guy who always does the right thing. And I think that's pretty nice. Um, right. Yeah. So yeah. Superman. Now, yeah, absolutely. Um, who's your favorite superhero, Uno? My favorite superhero? Um, I am a big fan of Batman. I love all the Captain Starlights, of course. They are some pretty crazy superheroes. Um, but I think that maybe I do like Martian Manhunter. He's That's if we're saying in the DC world. Um, sure. Uh, in terms of – because, sorry, are you a DC or a Marvel? Do you have a, a choice between those two? I, I, mean, like I love both, but I think I'm more of a, a bit more of a DC guy than I am a Marvel guy. Right. But I do love them both. They both have their place. So then here, what you're drawing right now is what exactly? Are you drawing the, the shadows on the on the abs or is this a part yeah. of the costume design? Yeah, so I've done what I what I started off with whatever sort of the layout of the cartoon version of the drawing. Um, sorry, could you repeat what I we lost start you. off with? We lost you just there. Can you oh, say sorry. that again? That's all right. So what I started, what you st what you saw before was just sort of the cartoon version of the drawing, which has no real shadow or shading or light coming off of it. Um, and that's a great way to sort of start out and plot out your your artwork and see what the pose is going to be and um, how the person is going to be standing or, or jumping or punching or leaping or whatever they're doing. Um, and now what I'm doing is filling in all the detail. So I'll fill in some costume detail, like he he's going to have, sort of a, a, a V shape coming off his costume here 
He's going to have some gloves, some boots. Um, the mask is filled in. And then I've got him floating with a sun over here. So I know my light's coming from here, which means all my shadows have to be on this side. And right. I've got a starlight in the background there, which hopefully if I finish this guy in time, I can put some detail on that. That sounds amazing. So if we have – so. <laughs> So we voted for no capes. That's 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 what yes. we've been told. No capes, which is a very important thing. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So an eye mask like The Incredibles. He has an M on his chest. Well, that I left that blank because right. when I saw the poll yesterday, it said he has an M on his chest, but I think a muffin also had just as many votes. So I wanted to check with you. Should I maybe do a muffin shaped like an M? on the chest you can do a muffin shaped like an m i think i can manage that yeah well then we're obviously going to combine the answers here Saurabh, and do right we're going to do a muffin shaped like an m right uh, uh, yes a, mu a muff an m shaped muffin m -shaped or is muffin. it a muffin shaped m i don't know that's a oh. good question i don't know all right i don't, know. I, I, don't think, I don't think i'm smart enough to know the answer to that one you know <laughs> i think i think you know maybe you're gonna have to answer that one for me so oh Maybe it's a, I would say it's probably a, a muffin, an M-shaped muffin. Yeah, that, that sounds right. That sounds about right. So then cool gadgets like Batman, what other cool things were voted on? Let's see if we can get that up. And we yeah, can let's have a look and see what people have a look. liked and didn't like. So he was going to be short. Right, so how tall would you say our guy is? I know it says short. Well, that was tricky. I had to make him, you know, look short, but he's not standing next to anyone. So how do we know? Um, but I tried to make him a little bit more compressed, a little bit more condensed. Um, yep. When you, you know, a uh, taller character, I'd probably draw a little bit longer, um, not as wide maybe. And so, mm -hmm. you know, this is all boring drawing speak, but... Um, no, yeah. this is all important part of it. So I guess that's a, that's a good way to lead in. Do you have... So when you are designing characters, I'm assuming you have comic book characters of your own that you work on. I do. I do. I have a comic book called Prime, which um, people can go and read on, on Comixology. And um, yeah, so I, I design characters quite often. And um, yeah, all this stuff that everyone got to vote on is all the stuff that I'm usually picking out by myself. So it's been really fun having some help doing that this time for this guy here. Right. So then with your character Prime, can you tell us a little bit about Prime and his story? Well, Prime is a superhero who has a lot of superpowers, he's very strong, he can fly, he can um, fire out of his hands, he's got really cool powers, and he's, he's just a good guy who's trying to, trying to help people. And um, the story so far is he's, he's struggling to do that. There are people in the city that he works in that don't trust him, and he's got to earn their trust. And, um, yeah, you have to go check it out to find out the rest. So how many issues of Prime are currently out there right now? There's two out there now. The second one actually only just came out this week. Um, and, yeah, there's more on the way. That's very exciting. And do you have, like, a whole universe built, kind of like how Marvel has their universe? Do you have something like that going as well? Yeah, I've got something like that planned. Um, yeah, some really cool characters that I, that I had and created with some really good friends back in high school and – you know, just decided one day to to use them and make a comic out of them because why not? Well, that's yeah, that's a really good question. Why wouldn't you? If you have all these crazy ideas, you might as well put them down. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I got to do I got to do that um, with the Starlight comic book, which was super fun because I got to work with a bunch of captains and ask them about their stories and their adventures, and we got to work some of that into the book, which was really fun. Yeah, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that experience. How did how did this all all begin? your interaction with, well, with Starlight? Because I know that the comic book has been a really big hit. Yeah, that's been really nice to hear. Um, it's been really nice to hear that people um, enjoy the comic and, and liked it and wanted to read it because it was so much fun to make. I got to work with, um, well, I worked with you a little bit and I worked with Captain Princess and a bunch of other really, really great captains that um, gave me ideas and told me about how Planet Starlight looks and... Um, that was a lot of fun, a lot of fun to do and and make up a, a really cool story that involved the, the
the Starlight Captains because they're, you know, after Superman, they're probably my second favorite heroes. They're pretty damn cool. Right, <laughs> they are very cool. Now, can you tell us, I just saw you there on the, on his left side, so the right side, just kind of where your hand is on top of. The just way here? that you shatter, yeah, that bit there. Can you tell us a bit about that technique that you just used to draw that? Because that so, was really cool there. When you're doing when you're doing shadows, you've got the option of doing what I'm doing here, which is just filling in a solid black area, or especially when you're working with just pencil and and I'll be working with ink in it a little bit as well. Um, you've got the option of doing sort of what's called um, rendering or cross hatching, which is where you just sort of use different lines going different directions over the top of each other, and they give you when you look at them from afar. They give you more of a, a gray tone rather than a solid black shadow. Um, and it just gives you a little bit more depth and a little bit more, um, um, I guess, texture on the drawing that, that, that brings it to life a little bit more than if it was just like you can see on the leg here. It's, um, it's a little bit flat compared yes. to the drawing here, which has a little bit more shape. You can see his body sort of curves around. Um, yes, with the arms and the and everything there. So you wanna you wanna play with um with both of those, and you know depending on your light source, you can get you can get really technical with it. But really, the best way to do it is just do it, and when it looks good, stop doing it. So, how long have you been drawing things for here, Sora? Oh just my God. Just yeah, for us to know how long how long has it taken you to develop this all of these techniques and all these things that we're obviously seeing you put together now. Sure, sure. I've been drawing for a long time. I actually don't remember a time when I wasn't drawing. Um, so I've been drawing my whole life pretty much. But um, really only recently, like doing doing the Starlight comic was very, very helpful in developing um, technique and doing, doing my own comic as well. Because when you're drawing something that um, – um has a story to it there's all these different poses and and places that you have to put characters that you wouldn't normally do usually when i just draw someone i draw them like this sort of just standing here or floating here but with a comic book i had to draw people sitting down and i had to draw them running and all of that stuff drawing drawing so if you wanted to draw the best advice i would give is draw different people of different shapes and different sizes doing different things don't just draw because i did I, for a long time, would just draw someone sort of standing there. And it wasn't until I started drawing different things that um, my drawings started to get better. And, you know, they'll, they'll keep doing that, hopefully, as long as I keep um, drawing new things, which is why this is so fun, because I had no idea what I was going to be drawing. Yeah, right. So then right now, our powers for this character, based on the, the information that we've been told by everyone, is just that... He's got gadgets kind of like Batman and he flies. Yeah. Was there anything in particular that you wanted to add to him? Like maybe we could, could we borrow or steal? Borrow probably sounds nicer. Could we borrow, uh, could we borrow the power from your prime mm -hmm. who has fire in his hands Ooh, and have that come out of his hands? Could we put fire in our guy's hands? Fire in his hands? Yeah, we can definitely do that. Absolutely. That's no problem. Let's let's do something like that. So, how would you go about drawing the fire in his hands? What's what's the starting point for fire on hands? So, for fire on hands or any kind of superpower on, on a person's hands or coming out of their eyes, um, yeah. the best thing to do, like like with anything else, is to start with a shape. And with fire and superpowers, you want to be very loose with it and not not be very very rigid and just kind of get get a cool shape happening. You know, um, so like something like this is looking pretty cool uh, here, like that. And then once you've got a shape, what I usually do is to a point where I can still sit, but it's not it's not um, fully there. And then I'll go in and I'll make it a little bit darker and give it some texture. And with flames, flames sort of are like water, where they kind of. Um, they flow, they're very curvy and they're very um, um, wavy. And so I like, to, I like to incorporate that in there. And what you want to remember as well with flames or any kind of superpower really is that they'll have some light to them. 
So you want to make your shadows around the flames a little bit less. That'll give you the impression that there um, there's light coming off there. Wow, that's really it. So you've got to think about like, so that how, how often do you draw something and then it comes back after, like, so you draw something and then you add something else to it, which means that you have to go back and change what you've drawn originally. Oh, all the time. All right. the time. All the time. I, um, yeah, it, for the even for the Starlight comic, there were a couple of pages where I had finished drawing them and then I was going to... Um, scan them into my computer so that I could add some color to them. And um, I realized I needed to redraw certain sections of them because there were things that I'd missed or things that I needed to go back and change or things that I thought could look better. So that, that constantly happens and that's, that's, that's going to happen. But the way you got to think of it, I think is that if you're noticing something you can do better, it means you're improving and that's, that's a good thing. So, Sorry, we've just got a question from Antoine out in Alice Springs, and they're asking, how does, how do you know what you're drawing and what superpowers does this guy have? So how do I know what I'm drawing in terms of this drawing? I got a lot of votes in about this guy. In terms of any other drawing, it depends on the, the situation. If it's for a comic, I'll have um, pages in a script that I have to do so I know, okay, for the for for example, I've got the Starlight comic in front of me here, and so like this page here, I knew I had to draw, you know, Admiral Starlight and Nana Starlight talking to the kids, and then I knew what I had to draw in each one. So here is what the kids are looking at, and then there's the kids looking, and then, you know, I knew what I was drawing there, and then um, what was the second part of the question? Sorry, it was what what superpowers does this guy have? Ah, well, okay, well he can fly. He's got some cool gadgets. He's got yep. some fire on his hands now, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. Does anyone, anyone who's writing in, do they have, they well, can I'll jump look, high is, is on there as well. That's, that's yeah, I'm looking, uh, he's got being really annoying is one of them. Time travel is cool. Um, they can talk to animals. I think would be really great. Talk to animals is a great one. Um, we also have, I saw one earlier and it was invisibility. I think I saw. So let's just say we were going to incorporate invisibility. What would be the best way to incorporate invisibility into this character? Who's already got all these powers, got all these things going on. So how would, how would we bring invisibility into it? Well, I would say the best way to do it would be, I would take probably here mm -hmm. and I would just erase it down a little bit. And then maybe when he becomes invisible, there's sort of a little bit of a, like a flash of energy that happens. Oh, so that's cool. A little, bit, a little bit of energy here, wrapping around his leg, like he's becoming invisible here. And then we want to still, you know, as an audience, we want to still know what was there and where his foot was. So you just give it a little bit of a, a really light outline, hey. Yeah, just 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 a very very even less detail than the original layout. Just a very light sort of outline there. Maybe there's some gaps in it because he's invisible. So just rub. Of course, when you when you get invisible, you have gaps through. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Maybe there's some invisible invisibility happening there, and that's now, good. Because that's less for me to draw. <laughs> so it's it's a win-win because we get more powers and it's easier for the artist. Yeah, exactly right. So I'm just looking here as well at the list that we've gotten. One of the one of the things I think it's it's someone it's option sixteen is the last option that was put forward in the uh, in in the thing. It says he can make trees grow and rise out of the ground. Cool. That's so, pretty cool. That's yeah, very cool. It's really cool power. So. Let's say, sorry, up here, we were about to incorporate. So we've got fire out of the arms. He can fly because he's obviously flying. He um, has all the gadgets that Batman has. And now we're gonna, he's in, he can have invisibility. And now we're going to put the ability to grow trees and plants in as well. So what would be the best way to go about that? Are you going to try to have something like, do you think that, can you get to a point when you have too much going around the character itself and you need to start putting things in the background to show the additional powers? Yeah. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So for that, I think what would be a good idea would be maybe if we draw on planet starlight over here, mm. on the corner here, which is a forest, we can draw maybe some some trees have started to pop up mm -hmm. over here and they can have sort of some light around them. And maybe when he grows trees, his eyes light up. Oh, that is so cool. So then we'll add some light. Coming out of his eyes. Yeah. So right now we're obviously, you're drawing in pencil. So yeah. and you're on a white paper. So all we have is the black and white. Ah, oh, that is so cool. So then how do you how do you go from having a piece of paper that you're drawing stuff on with pencil to a fully fledged printed like page of comic book with color and all the different shades and stuff and the writing? How do you go about doing that? What's the well, step? I'm glad, I'm glad you asked because the next step after this is actually the step that I'm up to now, which is adding ink. So I take a pen like this, which is just a fine line of pen, and I go over the pencil and fill in the black lines with mm -hmm. ink. And this is the section where I'll be really precise and make sure all the lines are going in the right direction and make sure that all the shadows are in the right place. And if there's anything I need to adjust, I'll adjust it here. And then once this is done, the next thing I'll do is I will scan the um, finished piece of art into a computer. And then on the computer, what I'll do is I will go in on a program like Photoshop or um, some people use Procreate. There's a lot of really great programs out there. And I'll add the colors that way. And then from there, it's a matter of the book just being printed and then everyone gets to hold a real copy, which is the best way to hold it um, because yes. – it in the finished product and in the glossy paper and the artwork always looks really nice when it's printed in the glossy paper with the colors and everything it always looks oh, great of course of course so and right so when you're also drawing do you also need to account for where the speech bubble is going to go or is the speech bubble get added afterwards on the top you do, you do and that was something that i had to learn really quickly when i first started doing comic books was i remember my first book that i did I scanned the page and, and to go speech bubbles and I realized there was no room. I hadn't left enough room at all to add the speech bubbles. So that was really tricky. I had to go back and edit the pages and redraw some of them because they were, I just left no room for any of the speech and then no one was going to know what the hell anyone was talking about. Yeah, right. So if, if you've drawn a whole page of comic book and you have – like one one of the panels that you've messed up on. Say you say you've made a mistake on one of them, or you realize when you get to the point of scanning it and putting it all through that you have no space for the speech bubble or whatever the issue is. Do you have to redraw that whole page, or can you just simply redraw that one little panel? Uh, most of the time, you can just do the one panel, which is nice because um, you can just redraw the one panel and then just digitally put it in there over the top of the old one, which is nice. But sometimes, depending on the page, if the panels are overlapping you may have to redo the whole page. Um, that's less fun when you have to do that because like 90% of the page might be really good, but you can't really fit everything in. So you've got to readjust it, which is always annoying. But um, hopefully you never make that mistake again after you've done yes. it. Yes, so you learn from it. Yeah, exactly. So I'm looking here and we got the muffin and the M. Look, just looking through all of the other options, one of the things that oh wait we haven't drawn the oh we have drawn the, the plants because that's the light eyes that are lighting yeah, up yeah eyes and the plants are over here okay so I'm just looking through it we're also trying to find catchphrases so yeah. Yeah. well hold on sorry we have lost you just very quickly you're back you're back I'm back okay. You have to, you have to Sorry, teleport no. somewhere, so you have to freeze your screen, go and do your superpower thing, and then come back. I did. I had to teleport somewhere. So we're looking at the at the um, at the catchphrases. I think that they're all it's it's a it's an even race because they've all you got know, one. Vote. There are some great ones over there, like not my shoe. 
That's oh. a great catchphrase. Knit you later. Another great catchphrase. <laughs> yeah, and um, a fart a day keeps the baddies away is one of my personal favorites. I think that's a good one. But I've just read one here, mm -hmm. and it's your muffin without me or muffin much to it. And I think that, that will tie oh, in nicely with our muffin-themed – oh, sorry, our M-themed muffin. That's very good. So whereabouts is the muffin M going to go? I think it's going to go right here. Do you reckon maybe we could – Should I do that now? I reckon let's, let's have a look at it. Save that till last. All right, let's do that now. That'll be good. All right, a muffin – an M-shaped muffin. An M-shaped muffin. All muffins have got to have a nice, big – Delicious muffin top. So let's get that in there first. Yeah, of course. The muffin top is super important. Yeah, muffin top. And then usually a muffin would be shaped something like that, right? That's kind of the shape of a muffin. Yeah. And then maybe what we'll do so you Oh. And then you rub it a little bit in between. Oh. Yeah, so then I'll rub it out. What I usually do is, I, like I said, I get the basic shape in. And then I can still see it. You may not be able to see it on the camera, but I can still see the outline there. Yeah. And then I follow those lines and redraw it in its final version. So how important is the eraser in this, in this drawing process? Oh, incredibly. Incredibly. I've seen, I've seen you rub out a bunch of things now. Yeah. So what I'm getting from this is that it's normal for you to be making mistakes as you're going along and changing your your, your mind as you as you're building on it. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You'll you'll especially when you're drawing something you've never drawn before or a character you've never drawn before. You're not going to get it right the first time. It's it's impossible because you're discovering what that character looks like or you know whatever it is. Even if you're not drawing a person, anything that you're drawing you're sort of discovering it as you go. So even now when I'm using the pen, I'm filling in bits and certain places that are the, the, the lines are going in a different direction to the pencil that's underneath them because I'm still discovering, you know, sort of what the character is and what they look like and how their suit looks or where their arm goes. And um, yeah, you're constantly going to be making mistakes. So the eraser is incredibly important. and you should never be afraid to erase something you've drawn because most of the time when you erase, you can still kind of see it there. So if you erase it and you want to put it back, you can always just put it back. It's not a big deal. So then if you have it, the, the, the bits that you've erased that you don't want anymore, but you can still sort of see them, by the time that you go to scan them in to your computer to do all the other, other stuff like coloring it in and the speech bubbles, it'll go away, right? Yeah, it'll go away. And you can kind of play around with it on the computer as well and – play around with the contrast and the the way that the light um, from the scanner interacts with the light on the page. And you can kind of remove them there if you can see anything. But, you know, most of the time I won't remove them because it gives the drawing just sort of more of a sketchy kind of um, gritty texture, which I, I really like. So right. um, sometimes, like, like for this drawing, for example, which is um, sort of a sketch slash um actual drawing like i'm not going to go in and erase the pencil underneath because i think it'll give it a nice sort of lived in um real look as opposed to looking super clean right. uh, and so you can decide that's that's just personal preference some people like to erase it completely some people like to to trace it over trace over their pencils with um with ink and do it that way and there's no right or wrong answer. It's just what you what you like most, really. Cool. So this is another question that's about maybe your preference. Do you have a favorite comic book? Oh, man. I have a lot of favorite comic books. And because there's so many cool comic books and there's so many. Oh, hold on. You've frozen on us. Um, Wait. There, you, you've unfrozen. Yep. Yeah, do you want to tell us again? I was saying there's so many different um, genres and there's so many different, you know, there's superhero comic books, of course, but then there's, you know, there's um, drama, there's there's zombie comics, which are really cool. There's um, some cool monster comics like um, 
There's a there's a really cool book called Spawn, which is like superheroes and monsters. That's a lot of fun. Um, it's funny you mentioned Spawn. One of the options here was Armored Like Spawn. Armored Skin there Like. There you go. Spawn has some. Do you reckon you could put some sort of armored skin in him, or is it too late now? No, it's not too late. Well, I mean, he's got a costume on, so maybe his costume is the armored skin. Ooh. Okay. Maybe that's that's, cool. maybe that's all part of it. Like his costume here, you can see he's got a a suit on that goes up to his neck here. Um, maybe that is the armored skin, and maybe this part here, which you can see this this V shape here, is like the main sort of breastplate of armor that he wears. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Sort of like how um, how Captain America in the Marvel movies has like his his breastplate with the star on it. Um, maybe that's what that is. So then, back to your comic books. What, do you have like what? What are some must read comic books if you are a comic book fan? Um, well, you got to read you got to read Batman Hush. That's a great one. It's a great Batman, Batman comic. If you like Batman. Read Batman Hush. Um, if you like Superman, read All Star Superman and Superman for All Seasons. If you like um, Marvel and you like those heroes, read Civil War. Civil War is a great comic. Um, you should read Spider Man um, Venom. That's a really good one where they introduce Venom for the first time. Right. Venom's um, a really cool character. Venom's a very cool character. And Venom is actually created by the same guy who created Spawn, funnily enough. Oh. Yeah. We've come full circle in the Spawn Venom we, world. We have. We have. Um, so Venom's a cool character that you can read about in, in his, and he draws him really, really well, the guy who created him. Yeah. Do you have any favorite artists? Well, that guy, Todd McFarlane, he's definitely a – um, up there. He's one of my favorites. Um, Jim Lee is absolutely one of my favorites. He's probably one of the best and most well-known. Even if you don't know his name, when you see his artwork, everyone knows what his artwork looks like because they use it for all the movie posters and stuff. Right. Um, he's really great. I actually met him once when I was, what was he like? when I was really young. He was really nice. I was at a, a comic book convention years ago before it was cool to go to comic book conventions. I was at a comic book <laughs> convention and I had gone there with a friend of mine to meet him. And we didn't know that you had to like pay and stand in line to meet him. We just showed up and we're like, hey, Jim Lee's gonna be here, let's go meet him. And we got there and they were like, nah, you can't, you need to pay. And we didn't have any money. And Jim Lee heard us saying this and he was like, it's all right, just let them hang out by the side and um, I'll sign their stuff when I'm done. And so not only did he sign my Batman Hush comic book and two um, photos. I'm, I'm looking at them. I have them on the wall over there. Um, <laughs> and two photos of his artwork. But we also got to stand pretty much like right next to him while he signed everyone else's work and drew them pictures and stuff. So it was he was a, he was lovely. He was a really nice guy. Um, wow, that is awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah. Now that's. It's, it's always nice when you have some heroes that you meet and then, then you can actually get along with them and they're a supportive of what you are interested in as well. Exactly, exactly. He was He's amazing. So everyone should go and read some of his stuff because he's really cool and he does amazing work. And maybe, sorry, what we'll do is we'll get a list of all of these things from you at the end of this stream. That way we can give it Absolutely. to, um, yeah, we can have, have that, that document there for people to Absolutely. see. Yeah, 100%. Oh. Absolutely, tell you guys a list of artists and um, and and even there's there's a lot of great places you can go online to to learn how to draw as well. Um, there's a really great comic book artist named David Finch, and he's got a really really wonderful YouTube channel where he posts a lot of videos of him just drawing, but he also posts a lot of tutorials, um, which I like even to this day will go and watch and and look back on and see, okay, that's, that's, that's a nice way to draw. Draw a nice way to this and that, and that's a really, really good resource. So you should definitely, if anyone wants to, to, you know, do some comic book art, go and check that out. So sorry, are you, what I'm gathering from you saying that, you know, you, you keep watching these videos and you go back and you learn, you're always learning, you're always adjusting and doing new things. And so absolutely that, yeah. that never, 
Absolutely. And and you should never stop that because then then you'll end up just doing the same thing over and over again. You wanna you wanna constantly be be um, learning and changing and adapting your style and adapting the way you know you do shadows or the way you draw feet or anything really. And um, that way you'll you'll be able to to take from the, take the best things from all of those different methods that you try and create your own style, which is which is always important when you're doing any kind of artistic thing, but drawing especially. Do you have something, what's the hardest thing for you to draw? What's the thing that challenges you the most when you're trying to draw? Oh man, um, hands are really tricky. Hands are tricky because hands are like, I heard a, 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 an artist describe it once as, hands are like drawing another body on the body. Because like when you look at the body, <laughs> you've, got, you've got sort of the torso, and then the arms and legs and the head come out of the torso. And when you look at the hand, it's the same thing. You've got the palm and then you've got all the fingers and the thumb that come out of the palm. And they're always in like, when you're doing comic books, they're always doing like these weird things with their hands and you've got to try and figure out, you know, like they're throwing lightning like this and you've got to try and figure out the right angle for the hands. And it's very tricky. So hands, hands are, hands are, are tricky and, um, Feet are tricky, but I don't worry too much about feet because feet, as long as you get them in the right position, people don't look at feet that often. Like you can kind of get away with, <laughs> with anything on feet. Yeah, um, right. But hands are very tricky. So and then, then what, how often do you draw also, just drawing, just drawing, sorry, just drawing faces and having your characters look different. Um, oh, you know, yes. Because you don't want to give them all, you know, the same nose and the same mouth because then you're just drawing the same person. So having them, you know, look somewhat different is right. Of course, really challenging. And so, so you, tend to, you tend to use like photos of people that you know and friends of yours because everyone looks different. So you try to incorporate as many different faces as you can, which helps. So how many friends of yours do you have in your comic books and in your stories? Um, I don't know the exact number, but it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. That is cool. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 in there, and and sometimes I tell them, and sometimes I don't. I just see if they figure it out on their own. Um, oh, you just show them the, the the comic and wait to see if they spot themselves. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes it ends up looking like them, and sometimes it doesn't, um, <laughs> because like it'll look like a different person, which is what you're going for. But sometimes it doesn't look anything like the person that you're drawing. So sometimes they notice, sometimes they don't, um, and then sometimes I'll tell them. If um, if I want to see what their reaction is to it, of course. So here we have our superhero that all of our awesome friends have given ideas for and contributed towards that you're putting all together. So, do you think, Saurabh, there's a name that we can have for our superhero here? I think there should be absolutely. What do you think the name should be? I mean, we've got. What have we got? Let's look at the powers. They can fly. Right. They've got some cool gadgets. Mm -hmm. They can um, grow plants out of the ground. And they can shoot fire from their hands. And yeah, they've got a lot of stuff going on. And they've got a muffin on their chest in the shape of an M, which means to me, I think the name should start with an M then, right? Because they've got an M on their chest. That makes you know, sense. You know, Superman wears an S and he's Superman starts with an S. So then he, he should have a catchphrase that would suit that. That would go well, along with it. I like that muffin catchphrase. What was it? Uh, let's see if we can find it. We're just scrolling down to it. There was your muffin without me or there's yeah. muffin much to it. Maybe you can, do, you can use both. Maybe it just depends on the situation. Oh, he's got two catchphrases. Yeah. So. Yeah, maybe then, something. It's tired of one, so he uses the other, you know? Oh, yeah, he wants to keep them fresh, so he flips, yeah. flip flops between like the two. Like muffins, like fresh-baked muffins, exactly. Because you want your muffins to be fresh. It, it, no one wants stale muffins, absolutely. <laughs> so is his biggest, is his enemy the stale man? And he's, that's that's the person, that he, the, the, the supervillain of our, of our yet-to-be-named muffin-themed superhero with all these powers is someone that tries to make the world yeah. a staler place. Yeah, the, the, the stalinator or something the like stalinator. that. stalinator. So he doesn't terminate, he makes things stale. <laughs> so the stalinator is yeah, maybe the, 
the evil the villain enemy of yes he's the arch enemy of what's his name his name his name his name i think there needs to be a, a muff if we say muffin I, I don't think we can take muffin man because i feel like that's taken yeah that 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 sounds like it's already a thing that sounds like it's someone's already come up with Muffin Man, and it's not quite our fire-throwing, plant-growing, invisible, flying gadget. It's hero. nowhere near as cool as this guy. No, I think we've got a much, much cooler uh, superhero here. So let's find a different name. Um, muffin... Something Muffin-related. Muffin... Now, of course, you are welcome to help me out here. Sorry, I am inspiration you've come up with it's tricky this is always the hardest part of creating a new character is finding the name it's always the hardest part name uh, the muffin so we've had a suggestion that's muffin maker that's good i like that muffin maker and well okay muffin maker i like that and then if it's muffin maker what i can do on the m is i can have a big M for muffin. Yep. And then maybe there's another little M in there for maker. Muffin maker. Oh, okay, so the, the M is inside the big M. The muffin maker. That's kind of cool because you have that same sort of shape that's in the logo. Is similar to his shape that he has on his on his costume. There you go. Exactly. See, it all it all comes together in the end. So we have Muffin Maker, and Stale Man is his arch nemesis. Yeah. Oh, the, sorry. It was it was the Stalinator. Was it Stalinator that we said? Stalinator is what I said. But if you like Stale Man, that's, that's oh no, Stalinator is good because Stalinator can be. It could be whatever we want it to be. It could be a robot. It could be a, a, a dragon. It can be a, a unicorn that's gone evil. Or it could be anything, yeah. A unicorn. Yeah. That's That'd be pretty scary. <laughs> yeah, right? The Stalinator, the evil unicorn. So, Saurabh, if this was to be completed fully, the next stage is finish the inks like you're doing now. Yeah. And color all these in on well, the computer that you've... You've you know, I really, I really like this drawing. So I think that I'm going to do the colors for it when we're finished here. But I need some help because I don't know what color he should be. What color should his face be? What color should his mask be? What color should his costume be? Oh. You think, do you think we could get some help figuring that out? Let's do that. That can be maybe we can do that. The last thing we do is figure out the colors that go with Muffin. Oh, sorry, the Muffin Maker. Let's have a look to see if we can get inspiration from the stuff that we have been given. Um, so some of the stuff I'm seeing here is someone said there was two suggestions that were if we go up maybe in the when they were asking about when we asked about question six what was the symbol that he should have. Some of the options were two of the options were dog and camel as you can see there. Oh yeah. So what if this? Maybe he has a dog. What was that? Maybe he has a dog. Well, I was thinking that he could be a hybrid of like a dog, camel, human, and so he's got fur. Oh, that's not bad. Like a really, really small layer of fur. That's not bad at all. Oh, and there's also yeah, someone suggesting maybe, maybe his V shape here is yep. fur. Maybe oh, that's there it. We go. I can do that. Absolutely. I also uh, saw someone that just su had suggested that the villain was – there was another villain called Villain Boredom or Captain Boredom, I think it was. Um, that can be maybe – it can be the two villains against um, our friend Muffin Maker. Yeah, so then, What is your favourite muffin flavour? Oh, chocolate chip. Absolutely. So it's it, it's not not boogers, not not boogers and farts. We we like boogers and farts here. At I, think, I think that's a captain thing. I don't I don't know. I don't know. You, you don't like boogers and farts? I mean, look, I've had it, and it. I think chocolate chip is still my favorite. I'm not saying boogers and farts is bad, but I think chocolate chip is still my favorite. All right. So if we're going to include, make the colors chocolate chip muffin themed. What are those colors that we have there? 
That would be like a, a brown and a darker brown or a brown and a black, maybe. All right, so our themes are brown, black, and different shades of brown. Yeah. All right. Well, sorry, I, I think the like texture. Ah, oh, that is awesome. That's looking so great. Shoulder here. Now I'm gonna fill in. This is this is one of my favorite parts. Is filling in the blacks because it's when the drawing really starts to look. It doesn't look like a comic book drawing until I do this to me in my head. Right. So you got a sharpie to do this? Yeah, I use a sharpie. I use really anything. I, I usually use um, one of these, but it's kind of out of ink, so I'm just using a sharpie just now. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of people who say, "Oh, you should use this. You should use that." It doesn't really matter what you use. You can you can draw with just a random pencil you found on the ground and a pen and make it look amazing. Right. Well, there you go. Now, sorry, I think that is all the time we have today. So the okay. cool thing is that you said you were going to finish this off and we are really excited to see what the final thing will look I'm like. I'm definitely going to finish this off. I'll finish off the sketch. I'll add some color to it. I'll finish off, you know, the background and everything. And um, yeah, I'll make sure I send through both just the black and white and the colored version to you guys. That would um, be incredible. Yeah. Uh, we are getting just one sort of thing here. Um, I think that is all the time that we have left here for this stream. So uh, thank you so much for coming in. Or thank you for having me. For joining us over the interwebs. Um, your drawings are incredible and We'll get that list of things that you mentioned, comic books that we should read. Um, yeah. it'd be great if you could get us to... I'll send it through with um, the finished drawing. Yes, please send that through. And it would also be great if we could get um, some of your, the Prime stuff as well, some of your own comic book stuff. It would be really cool for us to keep an eye on and track what you're up to. Sure, absolutely. Now, hopefully everyone watching, whether it's in the hospitals or on any of our live channels or media channels, we hope you've had as much fun as we have. These drawings have been really cool, and hopefully you've learned a lot. I don't even know where to begin with all the stuff that I've learned. So Yeah, and if anyone, if anyone has any, like, questions or anything that they think of about, you know, drawing or where to go for learning to draw, just um, ask the captains and they can ask me and we'll somehow get them get answers to you guys. Absolutely. No, sorry. Thank you so much for joining us today. It has been a blast. <laughs> and. Thank you. Uh, yeah, until until next time. Hopefully there's another another comic book, Starlight comic book coming down the pipes later on so we can work together again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's All good right. to see you. Thank you, you too. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Captain Starlight with our artist, Sorab Kaikabad, and until next time, we will see thank you there. You.